Hello. Hello. You know, it's so funny. I was just about to say, welcome to the Knitting a Good Yarn podcast, but that's not what I do. That is. Well, you did it this time. Welcome to the Knitting a Good Yarn <laughs> podcast. My name is Jackie. I'm Carmen. And this is a podcast about knitting a good yarn. Yes. Yeah. Knitting. Knitting. Yes. And all of and the, all the other things. adventures mm -hmm. that come along with our knitting craft and a lot of, I think, reflection about how our knitting supports us and serves us. Yes. Absolutely. And where it takes us to because it's just never ending newness and excitement. You think you, you think you know wool and then you just, another type comes up and then the world opens up even more. So, so um, we're so glad that you're here to follow along our little journey and our adventure with Wool, we're coming to you from Southern Ontario, mm -hmm. and we have a bunch of stuff to show you today. Yes. So um, it's been a while since our last podcast. There yes. were a number of things like travel and illness, illness mm -hmm. um, that led this to led us to have a longer period from episode to episode. Um, but we're here, and we're really excited to be here and be back. And you know, I was reflecting upon having deadlines for our knitting and having deadlines for our podcast and how sometimes having those deadlines is really supportive and like yeah. motivational and then sometimes um at least for me it so creates a sense of less freedom yeah right for sure um so we hope that you're honoring your timing as we honor our timing in terms of coming out with um the podcast and I expect we're going to be here for a while. So if you haven't gotten a beverage, if you haven't gotten cozy, of course, you can pause and start and stop um, at any time. But I expect looking at all the things around us and how long it's been that um, there might be some stuff. There might be some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who knows? Who knows? We don't know. We don't know. Um, so if this is your first time um, with us, welcome. If you're um, joining us for the second or third or I don't know what episode we're on. Oh, I think we're only episode three. Are we on episode three? Which yeah, is like that's episode right. Episode five. three, but actually and five half. and a half. Because um, <laughs> we had that YouTube thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, welcome. <laughs> welcome. We're glad to we're, be back. Glad we're we're rusty. Do you feel rusty? Yes. I feel very rusty. <laughs> Which so. is funny because I don't think we were ever really well oiled. <laughs> no, not really. But we're probably going to be extra kind of... What's happening here? Chaotic. Yeah. <laughs> Which I, I'm fine with. This yeah. is, you know. That's kind of our style. Pretty, um, yeah. All that said, everything that we talk about in um, the episode will be included in the description box below with the show notes, um, as well as our sort of contact um, where you can get us on social media and Ravelry, et cetera. Um, so we do our best to make sure that you all have all the information that we don't have at our fingertips during the yes. live recording <laughs> one of us if you have been here almost <laughs> never has anything but jackie gets it in she finds all the stuff i'll be like here's this and i have no idea what i did but then you get it in there. we'll find it we'll right find it um okay. so all of that is down below and if you're joining us because of the inspired by ellen knit along we're gonna try and put all of that at the end of the episode so that um those of you who are you know, just not into the Cal stuff or have heard the Cal stuff a majillion different times um, that you can choose to uh, pause or to put the Cal stuff on while you're doing your dishes or something. Yeah, so that's right. All right. What do we want to start with? Well, I think we should start with you because you are wearing, can we talk about what you're wearing? Because <laughs> Jackie walked in sometimes, well, not sometimes, often Jackie surprises me. I, I think you know everything I'm knitting. Yeah. Like I'm pretty much just like, <laughs> all the time yeah and then I think I know what Jackie's knitting because you have decoys or things that I think mm -hmm. is only and then she shows up and she's like yeah I just knit this so I am dying I'm dying it's so gorgeous Beautiful. so this is um the Peacocks sweater by Lena Holmes I don't even know this I, I know and um, it's knit uh, double stranded in knitted in yarn, um, and this is the colorway Infinitive. And part of the reason why I didn't tell you about it is because this is maybe your favorite. It's my favorite colorway, knitted in colorway of, of all, all time. time. Yeah. Um, and I bought 300 grams, thinking this is way too saturated. This is like mm -hmm. really intense. 
And then something has come over me in the past couple of months in which I've suddenly become me. Y yeah. <laughs> We have and fused I'm, I'm kind of into one being um, and yeah. have switched roles, but I didn't tell you about it because I uh, wanted to surprise you. Um, so it's this gorgeous. is, oh, there is, it's a round yoke. There's some lace detail. And then I did some modifications to this, which will eventually make its way onto the Ravelry project page. Um, in that I did a double folded collar, then there's the oh. round yoke with lace. It and wasn't then even in the pattern to do the folded collar? It was in the pattern. It was? Okay. Yeah, it was. Because I was like, that is necessary. It looks amazing. And then um, in the actual pattern, so I did one, two, three, four, five, six, six sort of lace repeats. Mm -hmm. um, in the pattern, it keeps going. And so the yoke depth is longer. Oh, okay. But I have this sweater that I adore, which I did bring, which... I think we showed in yes. another one of the podcasts. This is um, Magnolia Bloom by Camilla Vad um, in Poupeline. And I love this sweater so much in terms of like everything about it, except that the lace, this lace panel comes down like fairly low. Mm -hmm. And so I can wear like a nude colored undershirt and that kind of stuff. But I actually just want like wool to skin. Yes. And so I modified this and I didn't bring the lace as far down so that it's I could lovely. comfortably, it sort of like yes. landed where I wanted it to. And then as a result, I had to do some raglans. So look at you. This, um, you can see the hole there. Um, I did a round and then I added some raglan oh, I shaping. I love it. And then I this is it. super duper cropped with, yes. um, because nobody likes sort of, you know, getting in the car and then the small of the back being exposed. I think we talked about that. Mm -hmm. So what I did is I did two sets of short rows just after the sleeve separation and then right before the hem. So you can see it's a little longer. It's there. a little longer in the back. Jackie, Miss Designer. <laughs> Amazing. Um, oh. This was meant to be my like holiday sweater. Oh yeah. That's what I was thinking. And I was sort of wanting to have some garments that look a little more dressed mm -hmm. like that I could wear to like Christmas dinner or even to wear to like work yes um and exactly. although I adore all of my neutrals um, I think all of my muted grays tend to not have that sort of dressed up factor even though they're my sort of comfort zone that makes sense um so this was I was like I want to knit a holiday sweater except I don't want to do like actually I do want to do like a red sweater with like mm. trees um but oh, yeah. I knew I knew <laughs> that in the service of me knitting things that I wear all the time, this was my holiday sweater. And it just seemed like a really Baroque color, right? It, so I thought yes. um, that this motif sort of uh, suited it. It's perfection. It's maybe it's perfection. like, I mean, oh, I do, want you, it. do you find that whatever you have most recently cast off is your favorite thing? <laughs> um... Do you find that the most recent thing that you cast off is your favorite thing? Because I was reflecting upon like, what are my favorite sweaters? Mm -hmm. And whether the the like love of it is partly about the newness yes. and the accomplishment of like something new or whether there are some things that are just like, you knit three years ago and they're just your favorite. Well, it's so funny how these things happen, right? So I was going to wear, so, like, I was like, I'm not wearing a knit right now. And that was like making me upset. But then, I don't know, I didn't, anyway. I ended up bringing a sweater down that's old, old, old. Like, it's my oh. Koyame. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna talk about it probably right now. But it's, this is one of my favorite sweaters. And it's like a year and a half I old. I love that sweater. So I don't know, like, I guess sometimes... Yes, and sometimes there's just ones that, like, I'm like, this is my favorite. I think this might be, is this my favorite? It's hard to say that, but it's like, it's top three. It's what I would grab just to feel happy. So there, yeah. I guess that's the, I don't know. Sometimes it's the newness, and sometimes I think it's just the sweater that's, I don't know. I don't know and also, I guess, like, favorites change. Yes. Right? Yes. A different um and color for a different mood yeah color yeah. color because sense like, changes earlier this year you might have been like like this wouldn't have given you any kind of like no. joy because you'd be like it's so much it's like what's yeah like 
this is not even in the spectrum of what you would have that like the saturation what was it there was a colorway where you were like that's too saturated tune and it. died tune it tune it which is like i don't have it here do it no like the light green light is green and i remember just being like whoa okay and now look i also think it's seasonal like it yeah. was an interesting thing because i i mean so oh i didn't actually talk about the characteristics of this did i okay no. it's 215 grams of Newton and Hell double knit on a US 10. Oh, yes. And it came I could just out. just do this in the yeah. weekend. And I'm it came this. out to a gauge of 15 um, stitches by 21. Mm -hmm. And I knit it like frantically yes. in a week. Yes. I, I can imagine. It's so and with size, easy, size. meditative. The, I, knit the second size in the pattern for a bust size of 38 inches like and I mean it is cropped so that's part of it yeah. um but I just grams. yeah and I just <laughs> needed like so in in Ontario at least my experiences I was away in a in Costa Rica in a tropical destination when I got home it was like gray yes it was gray and it yeah. was cold, cold. Windy. and windy and I just felt like I needed the richness of something yes. and I'm like getting into the like festive mood and I'm thinking about like figs and clementines yes. and like that kind of mood and so sometimes you just need to cast something on that, that fits, fits that. with that and there I mean I don't know if you can oh, I that's like pretty coming, good I feel like it's coming out really well so this colorway it's like silky and shiny. There's like a sheen to it. And somehow from the inside, it feels like there's hot pink in it. Or like a hot fuchsia. Like uh, yes. inside of it. Yes, like, I can see what you mean. Is... Very good. Yeah. So there's another, there's an older colorway called Berget, which this is one of Carmen's finished objects, but which is also incredibly beautiful. Mm -hmm. But you can see how this one like glows from the inside. Yes, I see what you're saying. Because I have a actually have a finished object in Barraget. And when I was casting this on, I was like, Jackie, do you really need another? Yes. Yes. And the yes. answer is yes. And now <laughs> I like want, I want a hat. I want gloves. Like this color just that seems to be like you. color of the season. I and... just want to stare. I'm literally staring <laughs> at you <laughs> on the thing. Just going, this is a perfect, perfect, gorgeous. And it's such a soothing knit. Mm. Because you do the lace, which is really accessible in a round yoke kind of way. You could like read your knitting and then it's just like soothing, sweet stuff in it. Mm. Fast too. Fast. Sometimes you need a fast knit. I need a fast knit. I'm going to have, I'm going to have You're going to have a fast knit. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to have to do it the same color. Yeah. It's really interesting because the, at the um, sample by the designer, I found it, you know, down the Ravelry and Instagram rabbit hole and um, she knitted in this like beautiful muted like baby pink, which would be is, like so me, and it was like really yes. quite chunky and oversized. And I was planning to make that version, and then this one just popped on my needle. Mm -hmm. So, well, I'm glad it did. Yeah, love it. Although I kind of wish that you were like, oh, but you know what, just didn't get me right. Carmen, <laughs> maybe you should try it. You can try it. <laughs> yeah. you can try it. I'm gonna try it, and then I'm gonna make it. And then, you know, in the ways that you don't actually realize why you have done stuff. Part of the reason I knit this, this was a little bit of a palette cleanser after I finished the most. <laughs> this is like probably the thing that I've knit that I am the most deeply proud of. You should be. You should be. And that is. Oh my God. The Sunweaver shawl. Ah. Uh. It doesn't even fit on screen. Oh my god. Oh my god. So this is by Inez saying this was a test knit that I didn't complete on time. <laughs> Through no real fault of your own. I there mean, were some there, there were some, some situations that came in the way. Um and gosh. I feel like I could spend half an hour just talking about this knit. But <sighs> this this is knit in Newton and Yarn. Um, I held it single-stranded on a US-2. And the colors US are... Two. US-2. US-2. <laughs> and the colors are... This one is Interval. Vilgot. Oh, Interval again. Stardust. 
and this navy is in an Ragnar Fowler. Uh, <sighs> and how do you, okay, so Jackie, if you remember, Jackie was talking about this, I think our last podcast, uh -huh. and this was a new addition. So you had finished, this was, this was where you were starting, yeah. I think. And then you decided to so add. That. And then I decided to add the blue. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, is that okay? What am I going to do? What do you think now? I'm so happy with it. And um, oh. part of this color work was not knit by my hands. It was knit by Carmen. <laughs> yes. And you might be able to see the one, two. <laughs> You did oh, no, I did. Everything. You're right. Yeah, I did yeah. half of one of those things. But it was interesting because um, I knew after adding this one that I wanted to bring back the pink mm -hmm. in the in the um, shawl. And so when I brought it to Carmen, it was kind of like here. Mm -hmm. There was like one row of pink and then one row of um, the in Regnet Fowler, the blue. And... In the original pattern, um, Inez, it's a three color, the original pattern is a three color shawl and I made it four, mm -hmm. right? This technically, if you were to follow the pattern, then there wouldn't be this blue stripe and all of this color work would have been done in the pink, but I needed to have it. And so I left it with Carmen with no instructions in terms of how I was going to work this panel. And I didn't know if I was going to do like pink, blue, 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 pink. Mm. Um, but I just thought I, Carmen is a creative genius and she's so good with color and I'm just going <laughs> to drop it off and she's going to decide so that I don't have to agonize over the decision. Yes. And so and I didn't did even know? think about it. Didn't think about it. I go. didn't. I was just yeah. like, oh, okay, we're doing this. And then that just, it just felt like that wasn't like, I didn't even think of, that there could be another possibility, which is really funny. Yeah, and I um, I adore it. I do too. I adore it so much. It's, it's like this whole extra panel that sits here, like, reminds me of something like, like Moorish or something, like there's like something like, um, I don't know, there's like it should be in Morocco or something. I don't know, some kind of beautiful, I don't know. I love it. I'm not sure if that so, makes any sense. I, it's an interesting shape. Oh my gosh, it's like too big to fit on camera. It's, it's yeah. a kite shape. So it's like a trapezoid kind of. But I think all um for all intents and purposes, I I it occupies kind of like the crescent shape for me, generally speaking. Mm. And I feel like this sweater and this shawl they were meant to be beautiful. friends. They are. Now this is a significantly large shawl. The wingspan is 250 centimeters. <laughs> <laughs> and what I actually adore about it is because there's this panel, it's they're like, depending on which way I wrap it, it looks like a completely different shawl. Yes. So there's like this version, then there's like mm. more stripey and then mm -hmm. that motif is in the back. Yep. And then, you know, you know I don't know if you're supposed to wear it in this way, but I actually anyway. love it. Look at this. Oh, look at that. And this oh, is how cozy. I've been spending a lot of my mornings. Yes. Just oh, look how beautiful with it right there. It's tucked it's in. placement. This right panel here. is in the perfect place. Yeah. Oh God, Jackie. Oh God, that's beautiful. So, I, I mean, the story of this knit is actually a fairly emotional one for me Aww. in the sense that this was a pattern that I think, I don't remember when Inez um, sort of teased it, but as I talked about last um, episode, I just knew I wanted to have it. Like it was like a must have. And so this is very like classic Jackie, very muted, really beautiful. Um, but I was knitting this shawl while I was in Maria, mm -hmm. um, having sort of, you know, those experiences that you have dreamed about for like your entire life. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was in Maria to spend some time with humpback whales and as one does <laughs> a little bit of an obsession with dolphins and whales. Um, it's possible that I 
every vacation that my husband and I have been on in the past 10 years has been centered around me Swimming being able to be with them, um, whether it's from shore or on a boat or in the water. But I was in Morea to be in water with humpback whales. Unbelievable. And that dream started for me when I was either six or seven. I used to have these dreams about um, being in the water with humpback whales, like swimming with them as one does at six years old. And one of the things that I was really fascinated by, even as a small child, was their song. Yeah. And so I used to have, I have had this recurring dream for almost my entire life of um, floating on top and there being humpbacks at the bottom and that they sing. And as they sing, their song carries little codes. Oh, which is probably true. And so oh. that's what I see. Oh my God, Jackie. So, I mean, I went with the intention of knitting it like this. And then I think being in the water with them, I wanted that like dark blue. Yes. And I love the idea of sort of these little codes. Yes. Like my, you know, childhood dream that was coming true in my adulthood. Oh and my um, it's kind of like, I think of this as being bars of music. Yes. And like, this is my heart song and this is their song back. And oh this is my, my heart song God. and this is their song back. And like, even, you know, like you just don't know, even the like twisted rib, mm -hmm. this is very, this is getting very literal, I love but it. Um, humpback whales, they have uh, ventral pleats. So, you know, they're like striped at the bottom of their body so that when they, um, they're baleen feeders. And so they basically like, um, open really wide and swallow a bunch of water and all the water filters out. And in order to do that, they have like pleats, like they basically oh. have animal, ri like they have ribbing. <sighs> and so I'm like knitting this thing oh and I'm God. like, oh my gosh, it's like totally a humpback whale. It is. It is a like humpback color. whale. Like even adding that kind of bluey yes. gray is kind of a humpback whale color. Like, like that's what I was. It really is. That was the mood that I was in. And then I had this really amazing Aww. encounter um, with a juvenile humpback um, who had very specific markings. So the amazing thing about um, Maria and the humpbacks there is that they kind of have a resident population. Aww. And so when you go out with um, folks who, you know, we went out with um, some Polynesian, um, two Polynesian guides who had like grown up there and grown up like with the whales and they named them. Like they can see based on the markings, like yes. who it is. And so there was a particular whale whose name was Ulysses, um, who I had a very moving interaction with. And he had these beautiful, um, of course, his ventral pleats, but then he had all these like barnacles. Oh, just like that. Just like so that. Cool. Yeah. And so, jeez, it like, I feel like this will forever be my humpback yes, shawl. Because I truly manifested knit it there. Yes. Well, part of it there. And then, you know, as I was home, I like didn't want the shawl to end because every time I knit it, it was like my way of processing all of the memories of like being there and, and you know, just childhood dream come true. Um, but I didn't want it to end. Oh, well, thank God it was two and a half meters long. You know? <laughs> yes. And so, time for um, it. thankfully, um, Inez, understood that I bit off more than I could chew because I have never knit anything this ambitious in terms of like US size two, yes. um, 250 centimeter wingspan, twisted rib, lace, um, and it was an absolute and delight color and color work. Way, like flat, color yeah. flat. But um, Worth it. I'm like, if if there was ever a time to just stop knitting and say like, this is it. I've like done my magnus, my magnum opus. Like this is it. Yeah, <laughs> this is my magnum opus. Well, I love that. Yeah, and I love that your magnum opus would have just the starts of the saturation too. That it's like yeah. that transition, and you know, I also think if you hadn't been doing a test knit, like there was something about it being a test knit too that gave some kind of a structure to the whole thing. Even even knowing you were out in the ocean. And you weren't gonna, and you had the wrong color, right? Like there was that part of the story yeah. too, because she started knitting uh, with the wrong color, thinking it was the right. Like there was just so much to the story, and I think this test knitting part had that structure that was like 
containing the whole thing somehow. Like if this was just you doing mm -hmm. it, it might not have had the same, like how it would have all played out just wouldn't have been the same, I think, so. No, and I think, you know, what has become evident for me particularly since this podcast and having the opportunity to kind of reflect um, live and to have conversations with you all is that, you know, this craft for me is all about connection and it's all about people and it's all about um, finding meaning through our stitches. And so I think part of how I felt about this was there was a real sense of wanting to honor the pattern because I adore Inez so much. And um, if you go onto her um, Instagram or if you go onto the project page on Ravelry, she talks about um, the story behind this, mm. this design. And one of the things that her and I had sort of uh, talked about as I was <laughs> being like, is it ready yet? Like, is the test starting yet? Um, was the idea that she had a particular timeline for this design and uh, it didn't end up working out that way mm -hmm. because um, she was wanting to honor a sense of um, her timing and um, enjoying her time in Latvia, which is the, this motif is actually a like traditional Latvian oh, yes. um, motif. And so there was a feeling like this was a very sacred knit and me, of course, wanting to do a good job for the test knit, but me also wanting to like honor the spirit of it and honor myself. And mm -hmm. and so just in how it sort of evolved, the timing that I was doing it and um, Inez's insistence that like, don't power through it just to finish. Yes. Um, that gave me many, many needed pauses to kind of reflect and, and see what it really meant for me. Mm -hmm. um, and now I love it. You should. It's gorgeous. You want some knitwear on? Yes. Oh. Um, so what are the specifications? I mean, this ended up being 285 grams of Newton. <laughs> so 285 even though it's so it's single stranded. Long. Yeah. Mm. Um and it's so delicious. It is so nice. It's so delicious. Oh, it's beautiful. There you go. Oh. Alright, that's it. That's it. <laughs> Was that enough for it? Was that enough? <laughs> I don't yeah. think so even. I like how it kind of even almost is like lining up. Like there's just so many ways. I don't wear shawls very well. I don't like, you know, like um, you wrap your shawl. You're kind of like Andrea Mowry with like wrapping your shawls. Like they end up just looking gorgeous. And when I do it, I don't do it as well. But uh, oh, it's just so, so lovely. It's actually like a two person shawl. It is. This like, is like a cuddle just... <laughs> uh, on the couch watching TV. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Beautiful. Well so done. I used to wear it. Knit this, guys. Knit it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but also check out the um, project page and, and, and the hashtag Sunweaver Shawl. Did I even uh, say the name? Oh, um, Sunweaver right. Sunweaver Shawl yes, by Inez saying, um, because this is like the, the color, the color choice. And I've really deviated from the pattern in the original sample is absolutely stunning mm. oh yeah and but, then some other knitters ones too yeah like so kelly kelly chu oh, she has Chew. she always has gorgeous, gorgeous version per perfect stitches like yeah mm -hmm. gorgeous so gorgeous. just gonna keep this on jackie i love it this is how i actually would say that this is how i wear it most of the time which i don't know if this is an official shawl thing you can't actually move <laughs> because it's not wrapped it's just kind of like wait well, yeah I've been, well, uh, later we'll show my, um, I have a, quite a long shawl too. And I've been doing that, like, well, I put it on this way and then I cross I it and it. tie it. Um, did we want to do it next or did we, because that had more oh, of Oh yeah, that's right. Thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We had a plan. Sometimes. We sort of had a plan. Sometimes we have but a plan, but you know, we kind of go with it. Epic shawl time. I actually don't even want to stop. Like, I don't want to talk about anything else. <laughs> 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 I keep looking at this, this shawl. Oh, amazing. Amazing, Jackie. But really, people, if you guys have like shawl wearing tips, yeah, because I don't actually know. I mean, this is a classic one. I do that, and then I a lot. cross it and I tie it behind. Oh, kind of like there's a, a like. Yeah, like that, like this. Mm -hmm. And that I've been finding when I want to move around my house and stuff. That 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 has a name, doesn't it? Probably. I think of it as like the Outlander sort of style. <laughs> No. And there's enough wingspan to certainly do that. There is, see? Tails. 
Oh, it's pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, enough about this shawl, even though I could. Oh, okay, we'll just keep looking at it. I actually I like, like it with the whole look of my. I know, I do too. sort of like match the decor. You do. Don't I? There was even a pink leg. There was blanket. a pink blanket. Yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right. Should we move? We should let you show some of your well, knitting. Yes. Oh, frisk. Oh, frisk. There's Frisk. Here's my guy. Um, I don't like it's hard. I'm actually like, oh, I don't like it. We need, I need a palette cleanser in between. <laughs> <or something. laughs> ah, okay. Um, this is, believe it or not, another test knit. <laughs> I am always test knitting. Now, well, but this is a pre knit, so it's a little different. I, this is Miss Evil. Uh, there's a group of us where we are, um, she's just so prolific in her pattern, well, the recipe design. writing, design. designing. She's just, it's thrilling. And there are a bunch of us that just love her stuff so much that we, we now are this little group and then she releases it to us to kind of pre-knit the, the piece. So sometimes we don't even mm. fully know what it's gonna, like the full thing is gonna look like or she like won't have even the pictures necessarily. And we oh just kind gosh. of Leap go of for things. Yeah, which you know, of course is like up my alley. Yeah. It's exciting to find out. So this is, oh, and I should also say, if you haven't seen the other things or know Miss Evil, it's evil.knits on Instagram. Um, her name's Annalie. And everything she knits has purpose to it. So it's really like well thought out and she's an outdoorsy kind of person. So she's literally just making knits that fit her lifestyle. Like she thinks, I need this. So I'm going to make this. Um, so this is a poncho kind of thing. Oh look it, I still didn't. <laughs> this is so me. I just like I've been wearing this. I just like often have just little stitch markers in them. Is it handmade if there isn't loose ends and uh and a stitch marker? Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know. So it is a it's a poncho, but it's thinking she's thought through problem the problems with ponchos that I've found and that I haven't wanted to do if they're quite tight is that you put your arm up and then everything like you can't actually move in it very well. So what she did, and I, I, I should say I made mine bigger than her plan would be because I wanted to be putting it over like a puffer coat. Mm. Like, so kind of wearing, because I've been really liking my shawls over top of sweaters and over top of coats. So I made it a bit bigger, but you can see that the top part, I'll put it on in a second, but the top part goes down or the, the front part goes down to about here so that you can still like move your arms oh, but as we were talking geez. about with the back of your you know small, um, of your back. small of your back it's nobody wants that to be too high so she created a short row situation oh, where it's high, like high low. low so let me throw this on um <laughs> i know i'm always red riding <laughs> Oh my gosh, I just want to hug you. Right? You're adorable. I am adorable. Now, well, I'm just going to be critical of myself for a second, but it would look better. So I forgot, I should have, um, I actually had to keep increasing needle sizes as I went here. So there's a bit of puckering at the top because of this. Uh, I should have done that with the color work, but I I'm didn't. going out the size. Anyway. Um, oops. <laughs> I'm too tall, Jackie. <laughs> um, so you can see, look. I can like, I can go reach if I was going to make a campfire, which oh. I've never done, but I could do that. I can like do my chopping of my wood, but still feel like all nice and cozy. And then down here, it's still covering. That is such a beautiful line. Can we talk about that line for a second? Just like the drape of that line right. is gorgeous. It is, isn't it? Even if you turned around like all the way to the back. Like it's such a beautiful line. I, I get excited about strange things. But. Oh my no. god, it's so good. Oh, I love it. I've been wearing it. I've been wearing it all the time. And it's just a very cozy, it's cozy. And then to have the hood too, which I I, I messed up the hood actually. Um, I don't know if you can see. I tried to block it. So like it was, I made it too, too long this way. And then I had to like decrease it. So it like comes... In it's kind of funny hood shaping a whole other level of knitwear no idea you stuff. know we can knit sweaters but we never knit hoods no this is the first time <laughs> and now I've got stuff all over me <laughs> I also I think with Annalie it's the details right so 
look at she ends up doing this little gar it was a garter i can't remember actually <laughs> no it, it was, was double like knit stitch it was a double, yeah, knit. double knit yeah just thing around the edge which just gives it that structure and has it stay for you if you do put the hood up i i generally have been wearing it more like this more like a um, yeah, like a little red riding hood kind of hood thing. Like, mm. you should. I feel like you should be frolicking around the forest, I can't. picking mushrooms. I feel. I with feel like you're like forest friends. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> okay, actually, it's funny you say this. So it's called. Uh, I, I look at us. We're, we we are rusty. We haven't even said. I haven't said the name <laughs> of it. Uh, so it's Bye. called Berry Toggen, mm. and apparently, and I'm not. I I can't translate this well enough. But in Swedish, Berry Toggen is like has to do with being um taken by trolls like so you're like humans out it's, it's like, like a cautionary thing when you're out in the woods don't get all spellbound and taken by the trolls i would go with the trolls and so on was like she was like this looks like what did she say it was like a princess that would be taken uh yeah taken by the trolls i feel like i could be taken by the trolls happily oh okay so so pattern name needle size right needle size this is double stranded right this is double yeah yes um my hood was a different i think uh, i'm gonna have to look back but i think it would, i did this in like a six us six us six four so four point yeah four point oh milliliter milliliters millimeters um, so you do the hood, it's top down, right? So you start, now I will say this hood, I was like on our little chat group, I'm like, like it takes, <laughs> like it just felt, but also because I made the hood like 4,000 times bigger than it should have been. Aww. So like it just took forever. But then you you finish and then you finish it off with an eye cord. So you're actually left. I like when patterns have things where it's contained in and of itself. So if I mess up, later I can go right back to that thing. Does that make sense? Yeah, like, like there's sections. Yes, yeah. like, or like, you know, if you have sleeves, um, like when you're going top down and you have your sleeves, like you can always, it's our, well, no, no, what am I thinking? There are times where you, you can't mess it up. If you mess it up, it's already like self-contained. That's what it felt like with this because I was like, the hood is done. So if I mess up, I can just pull it all back and it's on an I cord mm. where you're picking up along the I cord. So, so do you knit this side. and then you attach the hood on second or you start with the hood? And start then with you... the hood, oh. I cord, then pick up stitches in the I cord and then go down. Yeah, that's such a, to me, that's an extra leap of faith because how would you know that the hood is like the shape that you want when it's just a hood? <laughs> Like, well, and I, I'm I actually like, knew it was the is shape trying I wanted. To think I'm like, how do you try a hood on? Yes. <laughs> and you and you end up looking. I, I should find some pictures. I, I felt like I was in like um uh oh uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Like you know, like the like I just had the just the hood. Yeah. <laughs> like this, I looked like I was going into battle because it would just be oh, this, right? Not that part, right? I looked like yeah, I was yeah, okay, from the gotcha. Middle Ages. Yeah. And I was like, oh, but I don't, I messed up the hood and it was a little like pokey up and all of this. And so I was like knitting it and then going, I don't know, I don't know. Like, and then the colors are funny. I love the colors. I, okay, so thank you. I love the colors, but as you know, I had moments yeah. with this because, so my original, I actually originally picked colors. I wanted to do almost like a yarn or Oracle kind of thing where mm -hmm. I like, I just pulled out a bunch of things and I just like closed my eyes and I picked and Menning was the first one that I picked. And then I, I think the blue was in there too. Inest. Inest, thank you. This is Harden. And then um, Berry Get, Berry Get um, is the purple. Um, I had this with a few other things. I wasn't quite sure, but I had started with Menning and I was like, you know, and I was doing this hood going, I'm not starting over, <laughs> but I did. I even like almost did start over because I was like, I don't know if I'm feeling the colors. And then I started thinking about, so as I was going, I'm doing this part and I think I started in here. And then I remembered our YouTube color fun thing we did. And I think it was Lynn who asked, like she, we, we had different people or people giving like suggestions. So fall, the fall colors. And I remember that I did, this was what yes. I suggested. 
right? Yes. So then I'm like, well, that looks so nice together. I really love that. And I'm like, and I already had, and it was mending and had the blue. And I was like, oh my gosh, okay, well, like, why don't I do this? And so then I'm all excited to create this, which I now I'm very happy with. But if I go like this, this was it for, uh, for a long time. Just the brown with the blue and then this orange. Mm. And I was not feeling it, Jackie. Like, it's not that it's not like, I think that's pretty and other people, like it would look great on other people, but they're, they're like not my colors in general. Mm -hmm. And and then you can see, you know, and in, in, um, everyone says when you're doing color work, you you should take a picture in black and white because the contrast, like to, to be able to see whether you're going to be able to see it. Mm -hmm. I, of course, did not bother with that. <laughs> and this is such a great example. Like you can, you can barely see it. If I, I actually afterwards looked and in black and white, it's like literally just all the same color. You can't see anything. So I'm going along going, oh, should I start over? Should I start over? But I had my plate of the barriget and I was like, oh, but it, I feel like that just brings it, it all does. together. So I persisted. Um, and I should say in her pattern, it's just, or her recipe, the way she did it was just, I think one, like she has the one color and then one color for the color work maybe a couple others. And I, I knew I just wanted to kind of stripe it. So anyway, kept going. Thank goodness I did. Then when I got down here, I realized how much I needed the purple. Mm -hmm. And in her, in her recipe, the, the um, color work motif that she uses actually has these like big other things, kind of like our peacock feather mm -hmm. is on our one, um, which I didn't actually mean to miss I just wasn't really paying attention to the pattern and I I just yeah I had to knit 60 rows around and I knit the 60 and then we realized like oh shoot like there was supposed to be this whole other pattern but I'm actually really glad I did miss it that way because I wanted to have the bottom be the purple like mm. I didn't want to then go back to the brown because I felt like it would be still nice but not like I really wanted to give this sense of this like the purple was just so important. Well, purple pink. The balance is perfect. So like important. the balance and the proportion is perfect, which I think speaks to your, um, your artistic, like your ability to find balance and proportion, um, as you it go. Is. I'm just going to show the oh, original, yes, which beautiful. is really beautiful coming out. Yes. Um, does that one? Yeah. So can see in here yeah so she actually changed her um colors a little bit for the bottom one um but yeah so it, there were these little things but instead I did this and actually the the proportions were I was playing around it was 60 and I thought of doing 20 20 20 mm. but then I was like mm, maybe I want it to look more like a like it's spreading out so I did 15 20 25 yeah um and then I just did the bottom anyway I, I do think there's something, um, and this reminds me of this, which is that color work is one of those funny things where I feel like, at least for me, I have a lot of doubt about color work because you really don't know how it's going to be until it's done. Yes. And when you like take one segment out, it completely changes it mm -hmm. and finding that proportion I feel like is so important in addition to finding the beautiful color pairings. Um, and I feel like you've done such a beautiful job of that. Thank you. I'm I so love the ribbing. Thrilled. It just, yeah, it just finishes it in such a beautiful way. And yeah, thank you. Thank you. And I, I want to say again that these are recipes. And so they really encourage you to just do what you want to do. So, you know, she had said, it, you know, it's good to have it kind of come in a bit. Um, I think we I don't know if I decreased or anything but like to have this be tighter in here but like you decide so you're you're sitting there going well what do I want to do do I want like I did two by two ribbing because I just felt like that's what I wanted to do mm -hmm. but it could have been one by one it could have been like I could have done a broken rib I could have done corrugated like who like it was it's it's all just up to you and there's this real sense of just play along play around with it and if you don't like it you can pull it out now I hate pulling out obviously <laughs> So I just barrel through because I just can't stand the idea of doing it again. <laughs> but <laughs> I would, I would if I hate, like I, I was going to pull it out if this purple didn't work, but I was just so 
so thrilled by it. I'm really happy. Oh, it's so nice. Thank you. And I, and also you guys can't feel this, but it is, oh, it's, ridiculous. it's the coziest thing. It's and now so I feel like cozy. I need to have one. I know you should put this one on actually, because it's, I am all, now warming up so nicely. It's such a, just like, I think, you know, again, cozy is our thing. Oh, you look at your little riding hood. Um, <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, it's beautiful. It's, the thing ever. it's so beautiful. I like it with the infinitive underneath too. And the proportion, you know what it reminds me of actually? Um, I mean, I love a swancho. Mm -hmm. I love a swancho and I feel like this is, this gives you swancho. Yes. Um, without the thing that happens with the swancho, which is if you raise your arms, then suddenly your hem is at your bra line you exactly know? exactly um or wearing a, a purse like this i just put my purse on underneath oh. and then it just sits right it's so convenient all these things I that you just one. don't want to do you, like with the regular one. ones you should yeah you do this and i think i got up to a round of 10 uh which is six what is six six point five maybe millimeters i might have gone up to i can't remember if that's 10 10.5 I just kept increasing oh as I went because it was getting, it was quite thick to have like, there are four strands obviously of Nutidin at once in the color work section. So this looks gorgeous on you. <laughs> oh my God. I might not, you might not get this back. <laughs> this is the coziest thing I've ever, We're ever all, had. We're going to keep trading all of our things until <laughs> I want all of yours. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's so cozy. And I uh, probably also didn't mention, um, these are free recipes yes. on, uh, on Annalie's blog. She just gives, she just. Increases. There is increases, right? Obviously there is increases. Yes. Right? I'm just, I'm like. How do I think increases? There were increases I for a bit of time. I feel like this is, I'm like looking at this and because I will never be done with this motif, I'm like, can I, can I knit this? Mm-hmm but like with these completely that's the thing you well, can make it any, like anything anything like any color work design i mean this is gorgeous. i was gonna do our cal color like motif mm. and then i was like ah oh, and then yeah i i was gonna redo it and then do it with that but yeah you can do anything you want trolls take me <laughs> <laughs> we've got another one trolls <laughs> this looks really cute you know what okay but turn this way and i'll show you the hat Look at this craziness. So I know you just sit like this and you can watch it after. <laughs> this is kind of pokey out here if you can see and then this sticks out because I messed up. But this is good. We just okay, what I have to say though knitting. is that like I, um, this is deeply comforting for me and I'm somebody who I struggle with hats because I actually hate having stuff like on my forehead. Right. Um, and you know, back in the day I knit a poncho type thing um out of like acrylic and I remember the hood looks so cute but when I put it on it like wouldn't stay oh yeah and so I feel like this I would go out in the woods because however you shaped it yeah it like fits my head perfectly <laughs> <laughs> well yes this this part where I should have stopped would have fit perfectly but I got all sometimes I get in my head and I just am like is this and like and I just believed I had some massive head I guess I don't know I, like I went way beyond what she suggested <laughs> because I was like it's not right yet and then well because it was basically a piece of cloth that didn't have like a structure yet because yeah. it didn't have something anything to... yes and pulling it down right like you needed like yeah there's so many things yeah really fun really fun project and super uh super useful and as I say there's something about putting some knits over top of a coat which I never really did before, mm. but now like it, it, it's like wearing a blanket over top of your coat. And you would, I think in the past, I would think that that wouldn't like, it wouldn't do anything because your coat is sort of like a fine, the final layer. Like how could it, it's so insulated. Like how could it actually yeah. care that there's something more, but it, it does, it makes it like warm, it keeps you all like nice and yeah. toasty. That's an interesting thing actually, as I'm thinking about like shawls and when it's winter time in Canada and you have these you have to put on giant parkas it's like mm -hmm. do you put your knitwear on inside right or outside because I have a couple like smaller shawls 
that are my winter shawls for when I'm like going outside because yes. those are the ones that the will scarfy. fit inside of yes. the giant parka. Try it. But now Put I'm on like, top to do all, all of it. All the things. Like, do all of it. This looks fabulous <laughs> on you. It's so pretty. It's so nice to see your knits on someone else. It like really, like, really makes me appreciate it even more. Oh my goodness. I think that I'm going to have to cast this one on. Yeah. You could do it in your winter colors or fall colors. My fall colors. Whatever you uh, suggest. Mm -hmm. Or you could do these ones. Oh. <sighs> So there you go. It's so good. Yeah. Love them. Also, the thing that is so lovely about Newton is just, you know, the biggest problem you'll ever run into with Newton is that stuff is too low contrast. <laughs> but you could, you know, to this idea that you were like, I'm just going to close my eyes and like grab something from my stash is like, I mean, honestly, you kind of could. You could. You really could. Now, I didn't, I, I didn't stick with that because I... <laughs> Menning stayed. I think it might have been a different blue. Potentially, originally. Anyway, I had a whole other thing. And then I was going to do a blue fade. That's what I was going to oh, do. I was going to do all the different blues. And it, that was going to be really nice. But then I, I remembered that, uh, that color combo that I had in that YouTube thing. And I was like, oh, I really want to see these. I'm really I think glad. what I love the most is the stripes, actually. I mean, it's a beautiful pattern. And I saw it when Emily released it. And I thought that was the cutest thing I've ever seen. But there's something about the lines and the stripes that I think makes it really fun. Yeah. And you know how yeah. accessories give you the opportunity to really like play? Yes. You know? I mean this is I mean this is basically a sweater. It is. Like you're you're doing a sweater but amount of no knitting. Sleeves. But no sleeves. So you're <laughs> no like, sleeve it's island. No sleeve island. You're literally but I'm going around e even though it's quite large, you know, yeah, like at the going end, around like, the end. at the end, the but, number of stitches is you yeah. know, significant. Yeah. I don't but I still think it might have, I'm going to have, somebody asked me to actually count the repeats to see how, because again, with the recipes, right, I'm like, I don't actually know. I just kept kind of increasing. Um, but it wasn't too many. I think it was like 200 and something around the bottom. Whew. Okay, that's not insignificant. No, no. Do you have but a you don't number? have to do any more. Do you have a number of like how many stitches is too many stitches for a row? These are the things that I think about with my knitting. Oh, yes. I do not enjoy when we get over 500. I do not enjoy that. Yeah, no. I think my, I think like 250 is like my max out. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. Like at 250, I think with um, the Sunweaver, it tops out at 241. Yes, that's And so nice. that was like a nice number. I think if I had, I remember when I knit like the Mare Shawl and the Anth Shawl by Natasha Hornby, those are um, beautiful, long, crescent yes. um, shawls and by the end I was like okay it's like a whole 40 minutes per row I did the Stephen West MCAL a couple years ago oh what gosh. was it slip strap again I can't remember if it was slip. whatever it was I can tell you it had the ones at the bottom like it was like a, a bottom that went like this anyway it was like 956 oh my god no and an I could bind off no no, no. I mean, I, it's I like to each again. their own, right? I mean, oh. I think I, I, it's an interesting psychology because really... We like knitting, We right? like knitting. Well, I know, it doesn't make like, sense. Why well, I, I, I want to knit. out loud, I'm like, <laughs> why does it matter? It does. Because you turn it around and then you do the same thing again. Or like, I can do infinite yeah. stockinette stitch. But I don't know, there's just something about like... It's I feel like I'm intense. plodding along. An hour to do a row, just like... I couldn't, uh, yeah. So Can I you stop mid-row? Like, do you ever yes. stop mid-row? Yes, always. I find stopping mid-row very challenging. I mean, I do it because it's practical, but I always, like, I feel happier when I'm, like, at the end. Me too. I do like to do that. I think that's why, I, also, I, other people have said the same thing, but, like, why I like cables? Because cables have, like, a, oftentimes a row, what, sometimes a few rows where you're just doing stockinette, and then you have a like cable thing where you do something and it's like mm. it's like that lays chips kind of thing where you don't want to stop <laughs> ever because you're like well it's either the nice easy row or it's the row that's fun so yeah. you like do the row that's fun and then you're like oh but it's just one more easy row like especially if they're you know uh, the one I'm knitting right now um my empo is like it changes every other one so you just end up I just can't stop I just love it one more one is more that called potato chippy yes 
you know what I read recently and I'm like, I'm not one of those, I'm not in with the knitting lingo. What does Moorish mean? Oh, Moorish. Yeah. Uh, oh, that was, I was meaning like from the Moors. Like, oh, okay. Um, but have yeah. you seen that? Have, has anybody read this? I feel like I can't remember where I read oh, it. Other so, people say? Yeah. But oh. like M-O-R-E dash ish. Oh. Moore-ish. I'm like, what is Moorish? Let us know in the comments. I feel like we Please educate probably us. will read that definition and be like, that's us. <laughs> like, I feel like we're Moorish. <laughs> I mean, I think potato chippy is a good. Yeah, it is a good. It feels like that. But yes, actually, my uh, I'm doing a test knit right now. I'm not sure if I'm talking about it today, but if I do, it's another one that's. You, it's like you do something and then you have a, a break row and you're like. It's a good rhythm. Yes. I think I think of it as like cadence. I think about mm-hmm. like. Um. Yeah, just having a rhythm. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the knits that just happen to have a really good rhythm are the ones that you can't put down yeah and sometimes like yes I feel like I was I was reflecting the other day on like being a process knitter versus a product knitter mm-hmm. and so um Tess knitting and I are taking a bit of a break because I can't be a, I find the test knitting process to be a process that pushes me towards product knitting as opposed to process knitting. yes that makes sense um and that's that's just me rather than I think the process of test knitting. I think there's something about it for me that I feel really um, on the hook for getting it done. True. And that doesn't sort of support me. And then I am leaving behind the process, you know, and thank Makes goodness sense. for Inez who's like, this is about the process. <laughs> like, this is about the process. <laughs> Do not freak out about um, the product. But yeah. um, I feel like when you have a pattern that has, that is, potato chip beer has that like cadence then it keeps you in the process yes absolutely and then the product like is just exactly. bonus absolutely right um as opposed to being seeing something really beautiful and wanting it, wanting it yeah you know? it's so interesting as you're talking though because i'm like i think though there is a process in the test knitting that i love mm-hmm. right like in terms of being with the other people and like seeing other people's things happen and getting excited so there is like a funny process that whole idea of process versus product like i don't know i i feel like i'm equal really like, yeah yeah it's so yeah because on both sides i would say like i need the thing done and I love it when it's done. I love it and mm-hmm. I love wearing it and I love like when I see it and I, yeah, I love that. Yeah. But I also love knitting. I love the process of knitting. I can't wait to get started again, not just for it to be finished, but for the process. But don't ask me to redo something. Well, so it's interesting because <laughs> I feel like maybe, I, I feel like my definition of being a process knitter versus a product knitter is maybe a little bit different from yours. Maybe. In that I think about product knits as being knits where you're not really enjoying the process you're knitting for a product that's probably like the extreme end of being a product knitter that makes sense do you know what that's making me think there's a we're probably both going to end up with this the um that big flower color work the drawing sweater drawing sweater i'm gonna i'm gonna look it up because i don't want to I don't want to this is we've moved on to dream knitting right because this is how we roll <laughs> but I will say that one is going to be a product knit for me I think I feel like I'm going to not enjoy a lot of that knitting at least at the beginning I don't all the long floats and stuff I Tomomi think I'm gonna Yoshimoto nice do you want to show yeah I'm gonna try and like where is a picture of a full So t- tell tell them about your plans for this sweater. Oh my gosh, did you know that there is a scarf? My plans for this sweater? Yeah, the drawing sweater. What are you oh. thinking about knitting it in? Okay, here it is. Well, that one I haven't fully decided. Oh, you haven't decided yet. I did. Well, I have, I have the wool that they have, that they made it in. I've got actually wool, um, but it's very low contrast. So, it, um, so I've got like some Ulysse, sitting upstairs Ooh. in a like a green um kind of like a heathered olivey green maybe um and then a navy so i was thinking about i've got three in the green and five in the navy which i think is what it would probably be in terms of what they're suggesting for my size i 
think I'm doing like a two size two, oh, something like that. Anyway, I'm not sure, but I will say it's the product piece that I'm like, ugh, like I want the sweater. I just don't know that I want to knit the sweater. Well, you could knit the scarf. It's the long floats. It's the long floats. I don't want to catch floats. I don't know why. It's I understand that it's that, a cadence thing. Yeah. It's a cadence thing, like the catching of the floats. Yes, I feel like some people um, are really. I've watched like various people. Do you ever go on the internet and just watch people knit because it's soothing? Yes. <laughs> I want to people do a lot of things, like, <laughs> like weaving too. <laughs> but like watch, just watching yeah. the hands do it. Yes, and, it's lovely. Um, there are some people who, when they knit, cut like when I knit color work, like you would not want to see a close up. It it, it would not be soothing because there's just like a <laughs> dropping and picking up, oh. and like it doesn't have that sort of. Um, like when people do it with a double. Like yes, when they do it with the, the two, double or you see some and... people do all of these like how to catch your float tutorials. Yes. It's just like the word that's coming is viscous, even though that's clearly not the <laughs> word. But there's a there's like a fluidity to the movement mm -hmm. with people mm -hmm. catching floats. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's true. And so for, I feel like for those people, they're like, oh, cool, I'm going to catch the floats. But when I try and catch my floats, it's like I the yarn is getting up. like twisted yeah, up. And, and then, then I'm all like twisting ah. and oh. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, Ladder back jackered. That's what I was gonna say. That is my reason to do it because I've never done that and I feel like that would be good. I, yeah. I'm probably gonna knit this thing. It's because it's gorgeous. Yeah. But I don't know that I'm gonna love the, the process. Experience. See, it's interesting because when you say that you're a product knitter, I've never known you to knit something that you didn't like the process, process of. of. It. Yep. Yes, I, although I have. I'm trying to think sometimes there have been test knits where I'm like I don't know that I'm loving this experience but it's a test knit so I yeah. have to finish it but yeah if it was something else that I wouldn't that's what I mean by I'm like I'm in the I'm both yeah I just yeah. what about you Are you a yeah, process knitter us. or a product knitter what does that mean to you um, and why like what is it that like what do you like about whatever it is that you like yeah that was clear <laughs> Like, if you're a product knitter, why do you like being a product knitter? Yeah. And do you like it? Do you choose it? Or is it just what you are? Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Your Deep musings. Thoughts. Deep thoughts. All Deep right. Ramblings. Jeez, we are, we've done an hour and an have hour. talked about three. Well, I guess we did three things. Three, yes. Invitation to pause, to oh take a God. sip of something. I'm sure this takes a sip of something. Yes. To stretch. I never, I never get to watch, almost never get to watch a uh, podcast all through. Like I usually, yeah, I'm knitting along and then it gets stopped and then I start again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, What's your next? What's my next? Okay. I like it when she goes, the, the, the smile starts and it's like, okay, here we go. It's going to be something go. I've never seen, I'm sure. <laughs> um, yeah. <clears throat> so... If you watched last episode, um, you will have <laughs> witnessed the segment of us discovering Crux Fibers um, and Brittany, who is now um, a dear friend who lives in the Yukon, who um, has all of this amazing low mileage wool. God. So wool where um, you really know the story. Brittany knows the story and she'll share the story with you. And so in this idea of connections and beautiful things i um carmen has a beautiful shawl um, made out of crux fibers but i wasn't ready after this to cast on a big shawl and i wanted um a palette cleanser so i could find the right rhythm and cadence for my knitting and after i had done this and it was cold i was like i want a hat and so So um, this is the Bolton Pass hat, is that centered? Um, which is a free Ooh, pattern by Espas Trico. Yes! Sorry. You understand me. Sorry. Um, so this was knit in, from Crux Fibers Low Mileage um, Two Ply DK, and it's a Gotland BFL mix. And it is the warmest, drapiest, softest, 
thing in the world. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I love the look of a ribbed beanie. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, although I'm very happy to do ribbing on like cuffs and hems, if you ask me, I cannot tell you how many <laughs> ribbed hats I've started. And I'm like, it's a I'm lot of ribbing. Still ribbing. I know, it's a lot. And if you went into my like, you know, timeout pile, there's like three rib hats because I'm just like, I can't rib That's anymore. So funny. And so I saw this um, pattern, which is in twisted rib, which is actually my favorite kind of ribbing in terms of um, how it looks. But it's yes, or it's coming out there. ribbing for part of it, right? Like it. Um, and so this fall has had a lot of travel for me, a lot of like really um, amazing, meaningful travel. I was with the Humpbacks and then I was recently in Costa Rica um, teaching and it was amazing. And when I came back from Costa Rica, I had a little bit of, um, it was a hard sort of transition home um, in the sense that I love where I live, I love my life here, um, but I just, I found the contrast of like being in the like jungle yes. to coming back and it being like minus Freezing. degrees and there was snow gray. and it was gray and it was also incredibly dark. Yes. Like yes. at 4.30 it was dark yes. and I was like, huh, what's going on? Um, I found that challenging and so I turned to my knitting for comfort and I thought, you know, what's gonna help me land back home? Beautiful to knit with Canadian yarn from somebody who I adore, who's Canadian, who lives in the dark all of the, like for a significant part yeah. of the winter. And I'm like, yes. I can, I can, oops, not woven in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that um, if I knit something out of Canadian wool that it would help me sort of like land back Beautiful. here. Yes. And this is, was like so addictive. I think I, I knit this basically, I mean, you could have sat down and done it in a night. Yeah, it looks like it. Um, because it's kind of like, it reminds you of the half and half triangle wrap mm -hmm. um, in terms of the idea that, you know, there's like ribbing and it makes this like little mountain um, or this little slope, which I think is really flattering, but also you are trading ribbing for stockinette. Right, right. Um, now so that, that little break. so you get the little break. Mm -hmm. So if you're a gift knitter, um, I highly recommend this pattern as a gift knitting um, yes. pattern because it just flies by and it has a really beautiful cadence. Now I will say that um, I made some modifications to the pattern because I wasn't really on gauge. Mm -hmm. um, so I cast on the number of stitches that I would need um, for my size head and uh, then I followed, the, the pattern's fairly easy to follow mm -hmm. in terms of like modifying for the number of stitches that you need. Right. Um, the only sort of part that was like, uh-oh, is um, as you're reducing the ribbing and making that sort of slope, you just need to make sure that your, your gauge is such that you'll get to the top of the mountain before the hat gets too tall. <laughs> <laughs> does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah. Um, and it turns then, into a stairway to heaven, though, if not. Yes. <laughs> Just a really <laughs> tall hat. Yep. Um, and then the way that, the pa it's a free pattern, um, which we'll link below, mm -hmm. and the way that they do the hat decreases is really interesting. It's like a, a spiral, like a three. You know how some hats are like, they're across, it's like a cross, okay, yes. four cross, and then some of them sort yes, of gather, it does more like, like a hurricane, a, a kind of hurricane like I did the hurricane style one, mm -hmm. um, because I know that that fits my head shape. Um, so that being said, I think it's really amenable to whatever sort of decrease um, style that you want to, and it's a really great recipe to begin with. And so, I mean, I and it's intended Canadian to too. have it. Canadian wool, Canadian pattern. Yeah. I think it's a really beautiful just beanie. I think it is a, I, I mean, it would be unisex, right? For sure. Um, gorgeous. And then this palm is from Peony Lane Palms, which is also a, another Canadian brand. And I mean, it was cute. I know. And then this just does it. it. To me, like the palm just is next level. And so that's my Canadian hat, which 
you're watching me struggle with the palm because like a great podcaster I didn't actually wasn't sure about the palm <laughs> so this is secured by stitch markers and it's not actually uh, sewn down but eventually it'll be sewn down well I was gonna say or if it was me it may never <laughs> be sewn down I might just keep going like yeah. that so because it works um, I knit awesome. this what was I gonna say what else is important here oh okay so I knit this on a 1.75 millimeter Ooh. needle um, because that was the fabric that I liked and that was sort of the twisted rib that I liked. Jeez, um, wow. And this was 45 grams. Oh, cool. it's so squishy and soft. Which was less than half a skein mm -hmm. of the, the thing, so yeah. I was gonna say if I had one, but yes. Yeah. Beautiful Jackie. It's the time for hats. It's the time for hats. Mm -hmm. It's the time for hats. And I think the time for palms. So peony lane, peony lane palms. Um, and is it, is it like a faux fur? It's a faux fur. Yeah, it's a faux fur. And they have snaps. And so I actually have like three palms from them. Um, and they sell sort of extra s bottom snaps. Okay. Um, so all of my hats have a snap at the top and then I just alternate the palms. Yes. Because. Smart. I mean, how many palms does a little girl need? Many. Many palms. That's true. Many <laughs> palms. But, yeah. I love There's it. There's my hat. Aw, adorable. Well, I mean, speaking of hats, I should show my hat. Yeah. So, um, I impulsively took a class um, through Yarns Untangled, which is a Canadian... I can't remember where they are. Maybe in Ottawa? I don't know. I've never heard of them. I know. I don't know how I ended up. You're really good at taking knitting classes. I am. Yeah. <laughs> well, I like, this goes along with the process of knitting, like the communal, I like doing things with other people. Mm -hmm. That's why I like the test knitting. I think that's why I like the, the classes. And I always end up just finding out something new, at least mm -hmm. something, and oftentimes many things. So mm -hmm. the great Kate Atherley, who is in Canada, I, 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 she's internationally known, but in Canada, like, she's like the hat, sock, hat queen, mitten queen. Like, oh. she's, yeah, she just like has, I, and I've never knit anything by her, but I saw this thing popped up. I have no idea where it was, Instagram or on a, I could even be on their mailing list. I don't even know. I don't even know. Um, but it was like, she was doing make the perfect hat. And I had just finished my Kate thing, my Barry Toggin poncho. And I wanted something fast and I am in, which we will talk about in a second, but like I am in a Canadian wool frenzy. Like, <laughs> I just want all Canadian wool all the time. And I have been part of this, um, I'm jumping around a bit, but um, the Long Way Homestead is an amazing farm organization out in the prairie somewhere, Alberta? And um, I think her name's Anna, and she is she and her her team are really um, like really bringing Canadian wool I think to the forefront. Really trying to uh, build this industry uh, because we have so, I mean we have a perfect country. We have wonderful sheep. You know why? Uh, you know it hasn't really been used, I think, in the way that it could be. Like we have so mm. many, there's so many possibilities with Canadian wool and I think that, so she's um, trying to bring awareness to this. And um, one thing that she, I've been part of for now, almost a year, I think, is a monthly subscription club where she sends um, a, a, a skein of wool and it's gonna be all different types. And you get this little card that talks about like what the wool is, where it came from, how that sheep was, created um this one that i'm going to talk about is i think it was re the rito something and it was built out of like oh like oh there you go Keep ottawa it. like the a university in ottawa created this sheep i think like based to create to have certain uh characteristics and anyway so i have quite a number of skeins um of Canadian wool sitting there and I, I haven't decided what to do like I, I think part of me they come in different things so you're gonna have like i've got a cup i think one sport some worsted ones, some like bulky. Um, so at once a month you get a skein of breed specific wool. Breed specific wool. Okay, and so With it's a range of like in 
from month to month is a range in terms of whether you're getting like a skein of fingering one month yes or a skein of dk okay gotcha. yes and the colors that you would have and they're all very different they're very different actually these i, I was going to do a color work hat and the they were both worsted but the other worsted once i started doing it was like almost like double the size of mm. this one so i ended up sticking with which i'll get back to but um they are also not dyed so it's just natural natural Canadian wool and you just feel it and I, I you know this is another one I think I should probably have more information on this but I don't I think she knows all these fleece pretty like the, the farmers. Yeah so Anna um, is based in Manitoba and I think of her really as a as a fiber advocate and educator Beautiful. so she you know um they run a mill mm -hmm. um and so they oh, mill yeah, a whole bunch right. of like beautiful um farm yarns and my understanding i think with anna is that um people bring their farm yarn to her mill and she makes it ah. um and i think they also have their own sort of uh, relationships with um, farmers, farmers and, and um, shepherdesses etc um so I don't because I don't I'm not in the the um, subscription I don't know if each skein comes with a particular sheep in the way that like Brittany's um Brittany from oh, Crux Fiber right. like it's like this is yeah. the fleece of you know Torfall Torfall or Nora yes. or Ginny no, or it's not or like it's that. not like that but I do think that um Anna for sure can trace every single skein down to the like person yes um who shepherds that flock yes and that you can sense? feel that's beautiful thank you because i you're always much better at explaining things thank god she's here um but you can feel the difference in the wool you can feel the difference uh, we talked about the last uh podcast too of a sheep that's been treated well like and yeah, it's just, it just, you, it, there's just energy to it. That's yeah. just beautiful. So I needed a project. I impulsively take this class. And of course I signed up like right before. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, we're supposed to have some pre something prepared. Like we're supposed to have a thing. So I'm literally like wine, like making a ball from my screen <laughs> while I'm watching so Kate. <laughs> and she's demonstrating. The, so she was talking at the beginning and then she's like, so let's cast on. And I'm like, yeah all right like why not like so i just cast on this hat while she's talking and it's a top down hers was a top down it's top down it's top down i was wondering how you figured this out like as you're winding without swatching i'm like how did you know and she talks so you don't even need a you don't even need a swatch because you create a swatch based on the top so you start off at the top and you can see it like really is great like how the the beginning of it. I won't give anything mm -hmm. away. Um, I think she has a book for mm -hmm. this, so it's definitely, I would recommend it, but you start here and then you, you create it and you can see for me, like you almost create, this is your swatch in a way, like you just keep right. increasing and you do it in, in a certain, like in these chunks. So segments. you segments, yes. And you increase, increase until it gets to the size that you need it to. And then you just keep knitting along and she gives all of the like these tables that are based on like what your gauges per segment and what your like we had to measure our heads which this time i measured the head <laughs> but i also measured it longer than once i got it on like it actually i i overestimated that too apparently i think I, I, maybe i think i have a big head apparently <laughs> like a very big head <laughs> because it was not i was like oh i could stop much earlier but um, anyway, yeah, so you take like a measurement here, you take a measurement around, and then you just make yourself oh, a hat. Oh, that's why it fits so well. Yes. Yeah. I'll put it on. So I'm knitting along going, oh, maybe I'll just knit. That's so cute. A oh, little cutie hat. Um, I'll just just knit like so her her hat was more, I think it was just like stockinette. But because of Anna Lee, I now have this like, you know, I'm like, well, I don't need to just do that. I will do anything I want. Like, so I'm like, I, I thought I have not done, I have not finished anything for the cow yet for our motif for the cow, which we, oh, we were supposed to talk about at the end, but That's sorry, okay. I'm talking about it here. Um, and I've been thinking about texture work unlike color work, but like texture work. So taking the cow and instead of changing colors, I just did pearls 
in the where the contrast would be. Oh, it's so good. So I have not blocked this yet. So, and and I think I was saying to Jackie, I think if I did it in a thicker yarn with a tighter, like a tighter gauge, it would come out a lot better. But you can see, like it creates the pattern. And then this is the little, oh, I can't, these are the peak. Oh, darn, yeah, it goes up like that. There's the peacock kind of thing here. Anyway, and I just knit around. And that was really lovely. It was really lovely to do a color work chart, but not have two Oh, so you, you basically, every single time it went to the contrast color, you purled. I purled. That's it. Oh. I just purled all of that. It's gorgeous. Yeah. And then I got down to the bottom. And in Kate's thing, she, like, uh, she was suggesting like ribbing. And I'm like, you know, I've always really liked the garter bottoms of mm -hmm. things. I think she even mentioned for babies it's good to do a gar garter bottom because their heads are growing. But I was like, oh, I'm just going to do a little garter. It fits so well. Hey, I like it. I love it. I think it needs a palm, but. Well, <laughs> hang on. <laughs> Stick it on. And I should say this took that evening. I couldn't put it down. I, I stayed up until like midnight because I just <laughs> couldn't stop knitting. Oh, I love it. And then I Beautiful. finished it the next day. It's so fast. And this was, this was less than 50 grams too. Is it, was it a DK? Or worsted? Worsted. 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 On, I think I did it on though like sixes or something. Oh, I really need to get you a palm. You want my palm? I can leave you my palm. You're so sweet. No, I can. I can get another palm. <laughs> I'm just gonna stage your palm. Just be right it. here. I love it. This whole time. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, you don't mind. No. And I'll just keep my head straight. <laughs> anyway, so cute that we both ended up with hats, hats. made Canadian. of Canadian wool. Wool. And hats. yeah. And I, I want to make some more. Like, it's just really, it's fun. I mean, I think, you know, um, <laughs> I got a DM from somebody uh, at some point in the past couple of weeks and who, and they referred to me, you're the Newton girl, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That, Which would be a fair statement. Yeah. Um, because I predominantly knit with Newton and I was reflecting upon, you know, Carmen, um, as you can tell, her, her enthusiasm is incredibly infectious. <laughs> um, and I was thinking about how much I love Newton in and of course you know I won't spend another half an hour talking about how I love the fabric and how I love mm -hmm. the colors but I actually think that a huge part of it um, upon reflecting on it now is the the feeling of connection that comes through um you know I started knitting with Newton in on the first collection that Carolyn who is Aww. the um who is the maker behind Honor Ock Air um, I've been knitting with it from when she started That's amazing. making the yarn. That's like two and a half years or something. I don't even know. Um, I think it's probably three. Aww. I guess would be around three. But um, it is about the yarn, but it also is about the story and the connections. And um, our friend Loretta, who co-hosts, who is co-hosting the Inspired by Ellen Cal um, with us, she had introduced us to Brittany and the Crux Fibers mm -hmm. um, some time ago mm -hmm. and yes. um i had looked on the website i had always thought that it was incredibly beautiful there was a particular um colorway called ptarmigan that i mm. have a mild obsession with uh, aesthetically beautiful um but it was really in the process of Brittany um getting involved with the inspired by ellen knit along yes. she created a hat recipe um and getting to know her as a person and also getting to know the story of the yarn and what it is that she was trying to do that um that the enthusiasm for the wool for her um low mileage local wool mm -hmm. really got sparked for me um and a large part of that also was because you had met Brittany and at city and had this like lovely. profound experience um with her wool actually yeah. independent of the story um and then brought it back yes. and so on and so forth um but i think that there is something about knitting with knitting when something has meaning to you and meaning is yeah. arrives in like many different ways 
um, what's meaningful for one person is really different from another person. But I think for me, feeling connected to something greater, feeling connected to women or people or beings who are doing something that they're passionate about and that um, has a particular ethos around it, all of that really matters adds to me, to adds to the experience. Absolutely. Um, and I, I do think that, you know, as I started to go down the road of getting to know more about all this Canadian wool that Carmen is in a frenzy about, um, and yep. being introduced to this amazing book, The <laughs> Field Guide to Fleece, um, that talks about sort of the different, uh, breeds of wool and, uh, just a little bit of information about it that I feel like what I actually fall in love with is, um, the producers yeah oh you know like yeah. it is about the wool but it is um so much about the people mm -hmm. and um i'm i'm so grateful that we got introduced to um Brittany and also sierra who um is the shepherdess whose um fleeces have become um britney's low mileage wool mm -hmm. and so I'm just curious um, if you guys feel the same, um, if there are amazing um, producers that are local to you. Um, and we would be really interested to kind of um, hear from you guys about that and maybe be able to connect um, yes. us, connect each other in this community with other sort of small scale or large scale, just other um, producers, producers. Um, who who carry meaning for you. And oh. I'm really exploring this idea of how our environment supports us and working with materials from our environment has an added layer, I think, of like meaning and interconnection. Yes. And so um, if you are moved at all by this exploration that we're on of um, really meeting the people behind the wool and the sheep behind the wool and the environments behind the wool, um, maybe leave a comment below and just let us know like where you're coming from and then to drop the name of a local producer um, that's local to you. Yeah. Um, and if that's something that you guys are excited about, then you know, maybe that's our next cow or something like that. Yeah, um, but I'm thinking about, about that later. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I think yeah. that's beautiful. And I actually, I was kind of reflecting on, I think the message in some ways, like Caroline, Caroline um, from Honor of Air, this has been her message, right? Which mm -hmm. is that she wanted to support um, Swedish wool. She wanted to bring Swedish wool back. I think, you know, these, these old breeds mm -hmm. that people were not bothering. They were often, I think, even burning burning fleeces because it wasn't worth it to actually process it um and actually really that's been her message to kind of keep like to to support that um in sweden and i think there was a moment uh, like over these past couple months where i kind of a light bulb went off and i'm like wait a second like you know that's i mean it's awesome and i love the swedish wool i want to keep supporting that that's beautiful but i'm like but it, her message actually could i could extend that to like the actual message would be to also explore maybe Canadian wool because I live in Canada, right? Like supporting people who are doing that work and it's happening already right here. Like it's not like trying to find it. Like there are people like Anna, um, also small bird workshop over in, um, on Vancouver Island, like just spearheading these and supporting all of these people doing this wonderful work. So, um, yeah, I feel like it's actually the same message you had all the mm -hmm. way with Nutidin and now it's just, um, it's like a movement. It's like the next place and Nutidin will always be part of our lives as well, because it's impossible once it's in your life to not <laughs> <laughs> to have it, leave it ever. But, um, but yeah, it's been exciting. Um, and then all the people, as you're saying, I think the other thing that um, has happened since we sort of fell into the idea of sort of Canadian wool producers is it, for me, at least is this like dive into um, sheep breeds. Yes. Right. And understanding because I have um, worked with Canadian wool previously um, that didn't speak to me. Some of it was, I think, because it was a little bit um, impersonal. Mm -hmm. 
like I just didn't know where it was coming from I just knew it was sort of Canadian and then there was wool that I worked with from a local farm that I actually I adore this farm um, and we'll talk about them in the next episode because I've gotten some stuff from them and I don't have it here and I want to talk about them with some stuff to show you um, but I didn't I knit something out of their wool and I didn't like the feeling of it so it's uh -huh. and, and that's like very personal right yeah um, so as I have been you know reading this book and really getting to even know about sort of heritage Swedish breeds I feel like I this for example um, is Gotland BFL and I knew on the basis of what I love about Newtedin and the particular um, colorways of Newtedin that contain for example Gotland and, mm -hmm. and Rhea um, that this would be a good fit for me in terms of yeah, the, the feel. feel of it mm -hmm. um, so we're excited to share some of that with you as as it evolves for us not that we were we are at all experts um that's never that's us. never gonna happen <laughs> we, we just tell um, we just talk but to talk about sort of um not only canadian wool but also breeds and what breeds yeah. we like and what we like about them and i think that that's one of the things that you know my knitting journey has been online really like mm -hmm. i really fell into knitting probably a year before the world shut down mm -hmm. um and so a lot of purchasing has been through the eyes yes as opposed to through hands right that's right because you yes right that's and right. newton like it's just you know what you're gonna get yeah um with newton for the most part yeah, um so do. i'm really excited now to be able to you know even if i am not purchasing through my hands i'm purchasing through a better knowledge of sheep and sheep breeds yes yeah and we will like both jackie and i are I can just tell we're at the top of a uh, spinning rabbit hole that we haven't fully fallen into, but we, yeah. that is the next, <laughs> the next obvious yeah. progression in this, because of course, then you do, you feel the wool, like you get to know the, the actual fibers by like spinning it too. Yeah. So just, uh, this is what I mean by that. You just never know what's around the bend. You mm -hmm. think that you are really, I mean, everything was perfect and now it's even more perfect and <laughs> wouldn't even known yeah. that this was on the horizon yeah and and a large part of it is because of this podcast right and yeah. and the opportunity that we've had to meet you and um, through meeting you you connecting us with others and so again much like the idea of the knit along being really a community um a community building a community connection creativity mm -hmm. sort of thing um we're really excited about local wool and and hoping that we can create more community through that yes as well yes and sorry one more thing i'll just add is that i there's something also about putting like getting the wool is a it's almost like a benefit but there's also this sense of like just contributing like when i did this um like the subscription mm -hmm. I, I don't even see it as because I'm, it's the like I love the wool mm. that comes in. It's so exciting every time it comes and what will it be? But it's not even about the wool. It's about actually like I just want to send some support, um, you know, to Aunt Anna's direction, you know. And when I buy from Brittany, if I buy, you know, like it just feels really good to put the money I have um, towards something that is meaningful that is that goes beyond even just the wool that I'm getting from that if that makes any sense like it feels yeah. nice to um almost just like contribute that way and then I get this bonus which is gorgeous wool. it is gorgeous wool oh. and and really getting to know this fiber that we work with yeah we love being it. more than um garments yes good so would you have, I have this still to talk about. I did talk mostly, so I can do that pretty quickly, but do you have another one you wanna? Let's do that one. Okay. Yeah. So I can't believe we really even, I saved this for my last one because, but I was doing that more for the Canadian <gasps> model. Ah. No, you know what? I feel like I want, oh my God, it's so good. Do you wanna put it on? No, you have to put it on. I don't have to put it on. You can. Yeah, well, let's hold it up first. <laughs> okay, let's hold it. I'm trying to actually, I always. What's the right, yeah, this right, is the right, right, right This side. is the right side. Oh my God. Oh, this is okay, another so one that won't fit on the couch. This on the is thing. the sh shawl that started it all. It is. It is. And this is all Brittany, okay? Like, so I, Brittany made this. I take no credit at all for the brilliance of the pattern of deciding to do this as a fade, like in this kind of way. It's Brittany from Crux Fibers. I put this on at Knit City Vancouver and I was like, and done. I must. I must. I wish you could feel. I mean, I just, so, ugh. I'll just show you as we go along. This is actually 
mostly Gotland actually. We were just talking about Gotland. And you can see it's how it grabs. You can barely see through it. Like it just, the fibers grab each other so well. Anyway, yeah, and you just transition into like a, a lighter gray. So this is a single flock find your fade shawl. Yes. The pattern is by Andrew Mowry. Thank you. And size four needles, 3.5 millimeters. Um, it's a beautiful pattern, by the way. It's very easy. Like a, it's garter and then a lace, a very easy lace section with this mm. center. Center spine. Center spine. <gasps> um, and it's a kind of an asymmetrical, well, an asymmetrical it's also triangle. <laughs> we just keep going this direction. Oh my God, it just goes all the way into oh. light. I have not measured this. I wouldn't be surprised if it's more than two and a half I think it's more meters. Than two and a half. Like yeah. it's, it is just, it is just, it's, it's so heavy. So this is a, almost 600 grams of, well, well it's probably Whoa. somewhere around there. Yeah. Six skeins oh um, in DK, it kind of ranges from a light, I don't remember if there was any, there might've been a heavy fingering in there and then like light DK and then DK um, range. But this one, I, since I finished it, I just, I, I wear it all the time. It's, it's like a blanket. It's so gorgeous. Oh my God. I know. It's one of those things I can't see. I lose words. Like I can't describe it. I can't talk about it enough. It's soft and drapey and, I've like stolen Everything it from you while you've been there. talking about it. I've just it's been like, really like there. quietly. It's just, so oh my ridiculous. God. It's ridiculous. Oh my God. The heavy, right? It feels like one of those blankets. It's like a um, hug. It is. It's like a it hug. It is the huggiest hug of all hugs. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. Oh. And just this fade. So all of this comes from Sierra and she's Crocus Country Shepherdess. It's her mm -hmm. flock. And so that's why it's called a single flock fade, right? Is yes. that um, they sort of blended together different fleeces. The fleeces are BFL and Gotland. Yep. Um, and this is where I discovered I can knit with Canadian wool. It just needs to be certain breeds that I like. Yes. Like yes. Gotland and BFL. Oh and my you gosh. Literally, like each skein comes and the names of the sheep are on it. You know, like it's like, I don't know. Was this Nora and somebody? And then like, like there's just, it's usually two sheep, sometimes three sheep per, per skein. And you can just see how it just gets lighter and lighter. I mean, Brittany's a genius to put this all together. The genius move actually, I feel like is going from the black, the black to the green. Yeah, I think so. Like, it's beautiful. And then when you wrap it, like you have, there's so many options, right? Like of. So how I, as I said, how I've been doing it mostly, I think, has been to wrap it. Oh, oh my God. Like, I'm just <laughs> wrap it around me. This one can go, I think, a few times. Oh, yeah. It goes a few times around. It's oh like gosh. that. Um, oh, God. Oh, and I just, I just wear it around the house. I didn't do this as well, but it's just so cozy. It's so cozy. Look at how beautiful that is. It's so like beautiful. a sweater almost that you create, you know, you, and, but it's, oh, I just love it. And it's garter. It's garter. The squish, the squish is so incredible. Yes. You know what's really interesting as I like handle your shawl? <laughs> it's like every color feels different. Yes, but it's so cohesive too. It works. Like this is, that is intense. Like I yeah, was, intense. I was worried I'd felted it. And I'm like, I don't know how, because I had, there's been no agitation. This, this all of this. <laughs> I want an entire sweater in just this. I've asked, but there's no more so far next, hopefully this spring. Brittany just sent the most recent places to the mill. Yes. Oh, I don't know what the timeline is on that, but, um, although mm -hmm. these are now the single fade kits are now sold out. The, I'm not surprised. The, um, Yarn this one. from this flock will keep on coming, which is what yes. Brittany reminded me. It's a living source of wool. That's oh right. my gosh, it's so beautiful. Oh. Okay, see, I see, I, now I just want to chuck my jewel toned sweater <laughs> and go back to all the grays. Um, Gray is home. 
<laughs> That's great. I think the answer is that it's all it's good both. because I'll just remind you <laughs> of these. So this is also the low mileage, but <gasps> Brittany oh. has dyed it. This is going to become... So this is Ontario wool oh from a sheep named Ginny. It's three-ply Romney and worsted weight. Oh my god. And this is also sold out. I know. But, but see, it's good it's in so jewel beautiful. tones too. It's just good. Yeah, all the things. All good. All, all things. good. All good. All good. Oof! Too many things to knit. So many. I do feel things. like we're doing a very cozy moment here. Huh? I know. I'm like we're really. <laughs> <laughs> this, is think we our, this is winter. Our our heater on. <laughs> I don't think it's on, so this is good. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah. Just. Although I don't, I don't like these two together. This is cool to me, and that's like warm. It is a little toby. Okay. Yeah. Here. Ooh, yes. Well, this one will match, obviously, because it's the same. Oh, yeah, that's better. I get to keep it, right? If you want. <laughs> because oh, I yes. have exactly, well, this is, I, it was one skin of DK was 100 grams, and that's 45 grams. So. That's true, because I have half of this one. I, also, you can keep that one. Oh, Jackie! Cuteness. <laughs> you look so good in hats. Thank you. I get to see it. It's, yeah, it looks good. I like that whole. I miss my palm. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there. So there. After all of that, like I went, I went on it. If you want to know more about this wool, we'll, like our last podcast, I I went on and on. Like it's it. Talk about meaning and healing. And the last time I was. I had done a bunch of uh, traveling too. Um, and I think our last podcast, I was like realizing I was just feeling very drained. Like I was, it just felt, I'm like, whoa, there's something I need here. And I didn't even know I did. And then knitting this, I, I'm realizing now that I'm feeling a lot better. Like, well, I think really really I remember what we talked about was the idea of how um, we both love travel and we both love sort of seeing the world and we have really amazing positive travel experiences. But there is something, at least for both of us, about um, the steadiness of home. Yes. Yes. And being able to kind of be cozied up in home. Yeah. And so, mm. you know, there's a whole... wrap yourself up in There's this um, idea from a lot of sort of folk herbalism or indigenous traditions, like the one that I can sort of speak about firsthand is like traditional Chinese medicine. Mm -hmm. And the the philosophy goes that like what everything that you need for your health and your, your well-being comes from the earth that you are currently occupying. That makes so much sense, doesn't it? Um, yes. And so I feel like when you had this experience of that, um, I was like, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Right, and home is relative. Home mm -hmm. can be a physical location, but I also think home is a feeling. Absolutely. Right. And I, I think for me, Newton has been a home of sorts. Definitely. Um, through just feeling and resonance and um, starting my business when Caroline started her business. And so there was a sense of home in, in the ways that um, our entrepreneurial journeys sort of paralleled one another. Um, and I'm also really excited about the idea of this Canadian home. Yeah, me too. And I mean, these are sheep that make it through our winters. So yes. it would make sense to that it's going to be nice to wear it. Yeah, that was the other thing I wore that. I mean, I was in a part of Ontario this weekend where there was a foot of snow. Oh, yes. A foot of snow. And so I wore that out in the like whipping snowy blizzard. And I was so blown away at how warm it was, but how light it was. Like yes. it's 45 grams. I know. And it was so warm. Um, and yes, it's a little bit like airy. It's, you know, you could see through it, but yeah. it kept me it warm traps. in such a, like it trapped air in such a beautiful way. And I don't know about you, but I've knit hats that are really gorgeous, like double brim cabled hats. Yeah. And I, they get hot. Yeah. I get hot. Like if I'm out for yeah. a hike. Um, so I was like, Canadian wool is so functional. It's a blizzard and I'm walking the dog and um, my hat is, my hat, my head is so warm and cozy. Because it's lovely. for our environment, really. It is. Yeah. It worked on the sheep. Yeah. So it's going to work on ours. <laughs> <laughs> it 
they survived and is that's that, all they were. Is that the same? It, it does though I don't know if you guys have done this I sing I this gave me great joy so this book is um the field guide to fleece by Deborah Robson and Carol Icarius um this was recommended by Brittany of Crux Fibers and my favorite thing about the book is like that most of the the um so it's basically two pages per sheet but there are pictures of the sheep oh and so I've been having like a grand old time, like <laughs> looking at things and being like, oh my gosh, there are so many different kinds of sheep and yes. they're very cute and they're really interesting in sort of different ways. Like, God, mm. this is Scotland. Look at them. Um, and so if it works for them. <laughs> if it works for them, <laughs> then it'll work for it'll us. It'll work for us. It feels like I'm all toasty. But not over, like, it just, it, it's like the perfect amount of more, if, if, like, wool just, I feel like, captures, it gives you exactly what you need, and it doesn't give you more than you need. Because it's breathable. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And it just sort of captures your heat and keeps it there. You're perfect. Yeah. So, what are you thinking? I have one more thing to show, but I have to go off camera because I have to put it on. Put it on. Nice. Ah. <sighs> It wouldn't be a podcast if I wasn't left here entertaining you by myself. And you'd think that I would... Oh, shoot. <laughs> I just looked. Oh, my God. This is exciting. <sighs> oh, my God. Oh, my God, Jack. Hey. Okay. okay, it's perfection. It's okay. Again. 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 Okay. okay, you ready? Are you ready? Oh my it's god. Done. It's done. She did it, folks. Ah. Oh. <laughs> oh, it fits you absolutely perfectly. I like this line. I like this. This is really beautiful. So this is oh. my inspired by Ellen Nidalong. Yep. Finished object. Finished object. Oh um, my gosh. So for did we Okay, now we should talk about the new. Yes. So the Inspired by Ellen Nidalong is running until January 31st yep. of 2023. It's being hosted by um, ourselves and um, Loretta and Natalia from the Knit My Way Home podcast. Um, and in order to participate in the Knit Along, you basically need to knit something using this motif. The mm -hmm. motif is available in a book as well as free online. All the information will be uh, down below in the description box. And um, this oh. is the sweater. It's the sweater. It is the sweater. It is the sweater. Oh my god. So I knit this in Newton yarn. Um, this top part is Kovats held double stranded. And then the color work is Lola, which is the purple um, in double strands. And then Kovats um, held single stranded because I was playing yarn chicken. And I won. You won. <laughs> and I won. Um, so the pattern is the Geol sweater by Avio Knits, and I subbed out the motif that's in the pattern for this one. And this is my favorite silhouette of life. <laughs> I say this every time, actually. Every single time I come on with a sweater, I'm like, this is it. This is the sweater that I'm This is the sweater. If I, if I have to stop right now, this is it. But, but this. It is beautiful. Look at it. Yeah. It's I'm gorgeous. so, so happy with it. Um, this color combination was Sweet Carmen's idea. Mm, I love it. I'm so glad you did it. It's perfect. And um, so oh. interesting things about this. I use so many different needle sizes for this knit because I really learned a lot about color work and tension and swatching. <laughs> well, no, I didn't learn about swatching. <laughs> I learned about the benefits of swatching. That it might have been helpful. <laughs> yep. So um, the arm, the color work in the arms um I knit on a US 8 so a 5.0 millimeter because yeah. I knit this top part then I knit the arms um and then I worked on the uh, bottom and I started with the same needle size here mm -hmm. knit three rows and was like uh the gauge is completely oh. wonky and Did you do magic loop on this or small circulars or magic no. loop? Magic loop. Magic loop. Okay. And I also magic looped here. Oh, okay. Um, but I mean I, I think it's a thing that 
is like a well-known thing in knitting that um, smaller oh, circumference yes. knitting we tend to be tighter yes um, I think that might even be even more pronounced if you're using um, like a, a small short circular, a I small circular. A lot. Um, but I got sort of a couple rows down and realized no like my gauge is completely off and it's not it wasn't actually so much the gauge that I found problematic as the fact that like the motif was not the same like it didn't look the same it was right. a lot wider and a ah, lot looser yes so I actually ended up knitting in order to get the same gauge as the arms um, visually I ended up knitting this um, in a like two needle sizes smaller in a US six which is 4.0 millimeter so that I so that it looked consistent because I thought that it would look weird if this yeah was not the same as this yeah um and in order to sort of try and keep things as tight as possible what I did is I put it on a really tiny needle like the cable oh, so it yes. I was knitting it and it was like all bunched up and not spread out yes and then I got all the way down to the bottom uh oh <laughs> <laughs> and I cast it off and pulled the thing out and oh my gosh you guys blocking solves everything but I wish that I had taken a picture but I like I was literally way too distraught to take a picture about it because when I took it off the needles I swear to god it looked like this <laughs> oh, no. like it like was all. completely in and then the it, it, it looked like this <laughs> oh, no, no, like I and I was like what have I done? And I thought that, that was about like the cable terrifying. thing, and I oh, was no. like, all that completely work, completely distraught. I mean, it was a lot. It was su such a fun knit. I yeah. had put this down basically for my test knit, um, and forgotten how potato chippy, yes. how lovely the motif it's a was. So motif. I just like went to town, um, got to the end, and even though I enjoyed it, as like there is no way when I took this off, I was like, if this whole thing, oh my god. No. It, it, like if it that if it's like be... this no if it was no. like this, this is literally what it looked like I don't understand why it looked like this <laughs> I was just like no like this is not gonna go it's not supposed to be some sort no. of weird peplum <laughs> um and then I but this oh, is even blocking. just steam blocking oh really yeah so I mean I put it out on a blocking You're the queen mat of steam blocking. I did because I'm too lazy to wet block mm. I just can't wait I'm not I'm not, it's not so actually steam blocking. It's partly harder. it's laz laziness, but mostly it's impatience. Ah, uh, that's true. Um, because I finished this on yesterday. It's so beautiful. <laughs> no, I finished it on Saturday night and was like, I'm going to wear it for the podcast episode on Monday. And then it came out in it's weird peplum hourglass form. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God. Um, so I just put it on blocking mat with wires and then I steamed the living bejesus out of it. It's amazing. And I think that it's okay. Uh, okay. It worked out. Yeah. It's amazing. Thank it's you. amazing. This silhouette is so beautiful. I love these lines that are like, I, I love, I love this. I love this. Mm -hmm. So, it's my cowslip. Oh, it's so pretty. And now you've done it. Now I've done it. We both finished a cow thing. Yeah, we both finished a cow I mean, thing. mine, mine took less than 24 <laughs> hours. Yours took maybe a little longer, but. But they you know all what? count. It was so perfect. And, and for the knit along, like anything. Anything. Like it all hat counts. counts. Yep. Um, you don't have to do a sweater, but I'm really happy that I did a sweater. Me too. And I also really like the lines, but I also have to say now that I've knit it, I'm like, oh, it would be so lovely to have a full the one. The whole one. The whole one. I know, but there is something so beautiful about this, like this part being separate. Like I really do love that. I really do love that. Mm. I quite like it and it's it was just... interesting like just I mean I didn't really get to choose the proportion of it mm -hmm. I don't feel like I feel like it's just like my row gauge decided when the split was going to be because of the construction right right but it well, somehow perfect. worked out well I and it. I think part of it is because this fabric is so wonderfully drapey mm -hmm. that it just lets Aww. it kind of hang it's fantastic I love it Jackie so She's done. Jeez Louise. Pretty good. I'm very happy with it. What? Now I just want to cast on another one. Another one of those? Would you make mm -hmm. this one again? I think exactly. so. Exactly. Yeah. It's I would. perfect. Like I, I think again that silhouette just looks so beautiful on you. Like with your with your yeah, shoulders. I love and... the shoulder line. Mm -hmm. Like just... there's a little mock neck. Oh. It has a feeling, funny enough, 
like of a shawl somehow like oh yeah you know it really does have that like it's almost like you're wearing a shawl on top first of all of another sweater oh. plus like it's it has that drape around the top yeah it's really yeah not your typical not, not a typical sweater but there is there is a desire there is a desire to do this <laughs> motif again in a full like full top to bottom classic like raglan white snow with wagon hem which mm -hmm. is this beautiful muted beige but which is also maybe wonderful. this was the beginning of the saturation that we're in i think so <laughs> <laughs> i like I, I mean it was on its way it was coming along yeah yeah, yeah. and like yeah and then like i we we just we we float along in our things that we like mm -hmm. when you're talking about the wools too i was like interested in really i've been interested in what we like you know mm -hmm. and that we have a choice about what we like you know we can choose in some ways if we want to like something we might not be able to like immediately choose it but you if you decide you want to like a certain thing you can create it i i, I don't know if i've ever given you this example but i always say it with my clients too about um skinny jeans when, when skinny jeans came in 2007 <laughs> i don't remember when this was somewhere around there i flares had been before right. so you know like the larger bottoms skinny jeans come in and i'm like those are ugly <laughs> those are just so unflattering i'll never wear them i hate them i hate them i'm never losing my flares and then i remember the progression of being like mm, you know like wanting to like the skinny jeans and about six weeks later just in love with them and now I'm still on them, even though skinny jeans are completely out, out apparently. Now. Yeah. And I can't go back to the flares, or at least I'm not choosing to go back to the flares. Maybe because I have so many of these other, like, oh my God, look. <laughs> no, I'm right there. I will never, yeah, I, anyway, but I think it's a choice. So I didn't like something, and then I did like that thing it, all within a couple months. So getting mm. to my point about wool. I think that there used to be wools that I might have considered scratchy or like, you know, like that wool when you said you didn't like it before when you knit it. I wonder if over time you'll start to like it more. Like wool's not scratchy to me anymore in ways that it used to be. Yeah. And I feel like there's a, an element of a decision like to want, if you want it enough, it's like you set the intention that you love this mm -hmm. and then it just creates like the world, you, you get your wish. I think I've, we've just found the one thing that we might not be 100% in agreement about. Ooh. So I don't disagree, but I do think that, I think when we really love something, I don't think that comes from a choice, right? Yes. But I do think, I do think that there is this phenomenon of, um, not being open to loving or liking something true and so we can make a choice to open up to something and sometimes in choosing to open up to it then we'll discover that there is something that we like we like we about it we didn't like but i don't know that but how then could i detest yeah, true. skinny jeans yeah and then adore them to the point where like 15 years later <laughs> i won't give them up but I know if I decided that I wanted to like flares, I think I would. I think I would. And not like I would make a choice right now. I don't know. I don't think it's black and white. I think that it's no. like sometimes it's yeah. this, sometimes it's that. But yeah, there is like, there's some kind of... I also think it just reflects the fact that um, desire is changeable. Yes, exactly. And so, and this is where I feel like I feel like desire comes from the body rather than coming from the mind, but we can snuff out desire with the mind. True. But yeah, I think both, I think, I think we both. can go both ways. Yeah. I um, definitely think the body. I think the body for me, this is my bias. I think the body uh, tells the truth. See, I don't think anything tells the truth. <laughs> I think the truth is relative. Well, I think it's yeah. relative, but also I, I don't, I feel like we have three, well, we technically have three brains, right? Yes. We've got our, yeah. our mind, we've got our, we've got neurons in our heart and we've got neurons in our gut. Yeah. So three brains and they're all, they're all beneficial. Yeah. And they're all processing 
life in a different way. They have biases and perspectives. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes the, the gut's right and sometimes the like heart's right and sometimes the brain's right and sometimes it's this <sighs> whole combo. See, I think it's the combo. I think, I think we have to listen to all three and this is what I tell my clients all the time and my students all the time. It's, do you have a relationship with all three? Can all you three. listen to all three? Um, because usually if you're dialing in through one channel, that's when you have less perspective or like your Beautiful. view is like less holistic. Um, I agree. But I think where I go with it is that there are things that I've wanted to like with my mind and I just don't like it. Mm -hmm. So I'm, so that's where I was like, can you just decide to like everything? Like something? I think you can though. Yeah. Because what if it's like, because you're not choosing. Yeah. And as I, as you're saying, like, I don't think, I don't think it's anyone. Like, I think right. sometimes our minds can get also like, kind of like, like our minds are useful too, you know, oh, like, and they're like, yeah. you know, they get misguided, but so could our bodies. Like sometimes our 100%. bodies say things and you're like, that's not actually true. <laughs> like, you know, you, all you actually need is some water. You're like, all these other things that you're thinking and you're like creating is yeah. just thirst. Yeah. So anyway, it's all everything. All, all things yeah. are great. And I think that ourselves are somehow like the, like, our observer self is what we use. We can get information from everything mm -hmm. and then choose based on, based on that. So what do you not currently like that you would be open to liking more of? Knit wise, wool wise. Oh, that's an interesting idea because am I going to choose something that I already want to like? Hmm. I'm gonna have to think about this. Could be a good comment. Five hundred stitch shawls. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. God, I don't want that. No, you don't have to. It was just a. But that's a good it has point. me thinking about you know where what biases do I have yes. um, in my knitting practice that are not based on personal experience. That's not a good example because you've I don't tried five hundred stitch well nine hundred stitch things and you've been able to honor the feeling that that doesn't feel good. But you know what? I like it, Jackie. <laughs> I like it. What may, I like it. I don't right now want, I don't like really long things. Do I want to want that though? This is the key. Do I want, I think I do want to. Like a, like a long-term legacy project. I want to want to like long, something huge. Like a huge project. Look, it happened. Her enthusiasm is infectious. Like you are just like, you're like, you're like, uh, you're like, what's, what's that? Flint? <laughs> That's right. Catches on. Like I'm yeah. literally now already like, how can I cast on some massive <laughs> king size blanket? 900 stitches in bulky. <laughs> in, bul no, in fingering. In fingering. In lace. <laughs> just amplify it. Okay, um, and then our podcast will be Carmen works on the project for the next six months. <laughs> just and here's so, another. So Carmen, do you have anything to show? <laughs> just another like four inches, but this took me a month. You know what that makes me think of? Um, the half and half triangles wrap is basically I always have it on my needles. Yeah, um, in knitted in yarn, and um, Katka Courage, who is a an amazing, amazing um, fiber artist. She knit a like I think it's a king sized half and half triangles wrap in new to the yarn. Oh my god, this I like. I like, like just this. like huge. Yeah, like what size needle like cable do you need for that? Oh, oh I don't know, I don't know, but you know goals. I am. I'm excited. I've looked at I've looked at her blanket many a time and she did it in um Greer, which is this really beautiful oh, yeah, pink, pink and she like weaved in random um mohairs oh my god and so it's absolutely gorgeous oh. and i have thought about a blank like a blank with all my scraps mm -hmm. like to do like a full mm -hmm. fade but i thought this was going to take me longer <laughs> but you see it, folks. I am already L like live, really live. You can just see the <laughs> my my cingulate cortex got in on this whole thing and is 
totally fixed fixed me up made me uh made me want to do this i do want to do this i do yes all right guys blanket blanket recipes yes down below blanket yeah well it's not even yeah yeah i kind of want i'm excited about this there's so many possibilities <laughs> anyway all right there you go well two hours and five minutes later uh-huh <laughs> that's i think that's all we have yeah this is good and we're going to come back not too long from now yeah we have another i am date almost in the books. done a uh a sweater that i can't wait to show um i literally just had the turtleneck to, to do and i just couldn't get it done last night um yeah you know i i'm curious like do we care about whips i don't think so well yeah. no wait a minute we don't have anything that's carved <laughs> so sometimes we care about whips but there's something about like we're finished these now mm -hmm. and we have hardly anything to say because we've talked about them at length when they were whips yeah so like I, I'm not saying that we will not show whips, but yeah. maybe we won't. Yeah, it's always interesting because our process is we bring basically everything that is in progress on our needles or mm -hmm. finished and we pile it all in front and then it comes out when it comes out. Yeah. Um, but I do, like when I watch other podcast episodes, I love when people do like a whip parade. I do But too. for some reason, I have always felt like I don't want a whip parade here. Maybe it's because we have two of those, but oh, even maybe. the patty jacks, like I still love them. Maybe they're whips. Do you like whip parades? What Let do you like know. seeing whips that may never come to completion for another couple of months? Because that's my hesitation because I probably ah. usually have about eight different projects on the needles. And so I'm like afraid to bring it on the podcast because I'm like, sense. this might never get done. Well, it will get done. It will get it done. just, you might, you might never see it. Like you'd have to go to episode like 18. Yes. <laughs> If I am making a king size blanket, we're going to be showing some of that along the way because otherwise we'd be like, yep, great Jackie. Yeah. Love that. I didn't know. knitted in 2025. <laughs> so let us know about your local wool producers, yes, um, people please. that you love. Drop in the comments mm -hmm. your ideas in terms of what you um, would like to see in terms of whips, blanket recipes. What else? Gosh. Or anything that anything. um we anything that's it. bringing you joy, anything that's promise. bringing you like cozy comfort. Um, we so appreciate hearing from you and getting to spend this time with you. And we'll see you in less than a month if all yes. things go well. Hopefully. Okay. Thank Bye. you. <laughs>